making this video for my GCSE electronics students and we're going to look at this question. It's from chapter 4, switching circuits, exercise 4.2. You may very well have done this question already in class, uh, but if you found it difficult at all or, or you would like a review or you want the explanation to be slower, this is the video to watch. So I'm going to do this quite slowly. Now, the first thing to understand is that we've got a transistor here and we're going to use the transistor as a switch. In fact, it even tells us that. So we're using it in a switching circuit. Now, what we can do, we can have a small signal go into this terminal of the transistor. So we'll have a small current go in there and then we can switch a larger current here. Now the current that we're going to have going into this terminal, and by the way, let's name the terminals. So we call this one the base, this one the collector, and this one the emitter. The current that goes in here, and we will call that IB, remember I is current. IB is going to be a small current. And that current can be amplified to be a larger current that's going to flow into the collector. So I'll do a bigger arrow for that and I will call that current IC because it's the collector current. Now it tells us what the current gain is here and it's something that's called HFE. Don't worry about what HFE actually stands for, we can just refer to that as gain. So it means that if you've got a base current, for example 1 milliamp, you might have 120 milliamps going down through the load. But that depends on what the load resistance is, but don't worry about that point for the moment. Now, it says in the question, the value of V in is sufficient to just saturate the transistor. And most likely you don't understand what that actually means. Well, this transistor is going to work as a switch. And when you think about a switch, a switch could work two ways. So let's just have a resistor above a switch and I'll draw a switch and the switch will be open. Hopefully you can see and let's just uh, connect that up to say 9 volts and 0 volts. Hopefully you can understand with the switch being open there's no opportunity for current. So the current will be equal to zero amps. With no current flowing, you can have no voltage drop across the resistor. Uh, and if you're not sure about that, with Ohm's law, V equals I R. So if I is zero, zero times this resistor value, whatever that resistor value is, must be zero. So there would be zero volts of difference across that resistor. So that's an open switch. Now, if you were to do this, you'd actually find therefore that if that was zero volts, the full voltage across the switch, across the open switch, so if we were to put a voltmeter there, would actually be the source voltage, the supply voltage, nine volts. Now, this is in what we would call cutoff mode. Cutoff is when we've cut off the flow of current. But of course, they talk about saturation. So what does saturation mean? Let's uh, sketch a little, another little diagram down here. So saturation is the opposite of cutoff. So let's have 9 volts, not the 9 volts is that important. And we'll have a switch, but this time what we do, we'll close the switch. Hopefully you can see that this time there will be a flow of current. The current can flow through because the switch is closed. So there will be a current. And if you have a current, you'll also have a voltage drop between here and here. Remember that V equals IR. So if you have a current, so something times something will equal the voltage. Well, in this case, it would be 9 volts. Because there's no resistance here, 
there'd be no voltage drop across there. So if we were to put a voltmeter here, that would actually be 9 volts. So hopefully you can see that when the switch is fully closed, or saturated as we might call it if we're talking about transistor, there'd be no voltage drop here. All the volts will be dropped across there. So if you look back at this question, the question says the value of V in is sufficient to just saturate the transistor. So the transistor is now saturated, so it's like a closed switch. And if you remember, with a closed switch, the voltage will be zero across that switch. So in other words, V, C, E, the voltage between the collector and the emitter, will be zero volts. Now that's not the question, of course, because the question is, what's a collector current? Very, very um, important to understand that the voltage dropped here is zero, but here it's nine volts. So what's the difference between nine and zero? Because remember, this is zero volts here. So we go zero, zero change. So we're still at zero. So zero to nine volts. Hopefully you can now see that's nine volts of difference. So with zero, sorry, with nine volts of difference and we know the resistance, we should be able to calculate the current. So the collector current, IC, will be equal to V. Okay, that's the supply voltage in this case. If you want to, we could say VS, the supply voltage, divided by, and then we need to know the resistance, which is 150. 150 ohms. So now, what is the supply voltage? Well, it is 9 volts divided by 150, and then, so 9, oh, better turn it on, 9 divided by 150 equals 0.06. Now that is 0.06 amps. Now, depending on um, how good you are in maths, you may want to express it in a different way. So if I press this button here, ENG, engineering format, it now says 60 times 10 to the minus, oh, 60 times 10 to minus 3, sorry, I just uh, accidentally uh, pressed the wrong button there. So 60 times 10 to the minus 3. So we could also write this as 60 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Now what you might understand is times 10 to the minus 3, that makes it thousandths of an amp. So in other words, 60 milliamps. 60 milliamps of current will be flowing it through the collector. Now, if you find this bit difficult, you can leave your answer like this. That would be fine, no problem at all, okay? In GCC Electronics, that would be all right. Uh, that's absolutely fine as well. It's whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Next, we have to calculate the base current. Well, we know the collector current. Now, remember, that's 60 milliamps. And hopefully, uh, if you remember back, we've got this gain. And the gain means that this is 120 times greater than the base current. So, if we do this, we can then say the base current, IB, equals IC, the collector current, divided by the gain, HFE. Okay? You could also, if you wanted, you could say, and this is probably the formula that you will have seen earlier, HFE, the gain, will be equal to the collector current over the base current. So for example, if this were 1000, and this were 1, 1000 divided by 1 will give a gain of times 1000. I've just rearranged the formula. 
So I've just swapped these terms around. Uh, so what's next? Well, we need to calculate the base current. So what I can do, I, do I know the collector current? 60 milliamps, so 60 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm going to do it this way. And then the gain, which is 120. So I'm going to divide that by 120. And I get this number, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, when we're working in electronics or engineering, we tend not to use uh, times 10 to the minus 4. We use times 10 to the minus 3, times 10 to the minus 6, times 10 to the minus 9, 12, like that. So if you press ENG to get engineering format, it now says 500 times 10 to the minus 6. Amps. It's important to write that. Now, if you switched on, you hopefully would now recognize that times 10 to the minus 6 means millionths. So what we can then do, we can then rewrite that. We could say 500 microamps because a microamp is a millionth of an amp. So if you're going to write any answer, that's probably the better one, but that would be okay. The next part of the question then, the voltage drop across the 2.2K resistor. Well, we know the current through this now, which is 500 microamps. So we've got 500 microamps flowing into the base. And as we know the resistance, we should be able to calculate the voltage drop across. What they mean by across, they mean just this voltage here. It's a difference. Voltage is also known as potential difference. So I want to know what that voltage drop is. So to do that, uh, using Ohm's law, remember Ohm's law, V over IR. I often say to people, you know, if you find it difficult, remember this, happy chicken or something. Make it a little bit of fun. Okay, the B, the V, like that. Now we want to calculate the voltage drop. So V, so we need to find V. So you put your finger over V, so V equals, the thing we put your finger over equals IR. If you wanted, say, to find I, you put your finger over I, I equals V over R, like that. If you want to find R and you know V and I, you can do that. So R equals V over I. We want to find the voltage, so we know, well, we want to calculate V. So V equals IR, and we know the current, because the same current, the same current that's going into the input is going uh, through the resistor. That's one of the, the laws that we need to understand. So now uh, we have got the current, 500 microamps, or we can write it as 500 times 10 to the minus 6. 500 times, and then we've got 2.2K, which means 2,200, but we'll just write it like this, just for a moment. And just to show you another way we could do that, I could do 500 times 10 to the minus 6, because it's millions, times 2.2 times 10 to the 3. And in case you're wondering about that, do you remember 2.2 means 2.2 and then k thousand? Well, 10 to the power of 3 is a thousand. If you're not sure about that, that means 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is a thousand. So this 2.2 times 10 to raised to the power of 3 actually means 2.2 times 1,000, in other words, 2,200. So next, I can do this, so I can say 500, and you can use this button down here, times, 
and it already gives you times 10, hopefully you can see that, times 10 to the minus 6, so that makes it a small number, times 2.2 times 10 to the power of 3. Press enter and it says 1.1 volt. 1.1 volt. And that's the voltage drop, 1.1 volt there. Now, it's worthwhile noting that if you had done the calculation incorrectly and you had something that said like 1 point, or 1,100 volts or something like that, you can feel fairly confident in GCSE electronics that your answer's wrong. Normally, when we have uh, any sort of calculations in, in GCSE electronics, it's going to be quite small uh, numbers for voltages, okay? So if you come out with a really big voltage or a really massive current, like if you thought it was 60 amps rather than 60 milliamps, most likely it's wrong, okay? Now, we know the voltage drop across this resistor, but the next question is, what's the value of V in? So, we know this is zero volts, and we know this is 1.1 volt, but the answer to what's the value of V in is not 1.1. Because you're going to drop a voltage here, 1.1, and then, and this is something you just need to know as a fact, you're going to drop a voltage here. Now, the voltage that you drop across the, is called the base emitter junction. We call that VBE is going to be about, so I'm going to do that wavy equals about 0.7 volts. So now think about this. We start at 0 volts, we go up by 0.7 volts, up because there's going to be a drop from here down to 0.7 volts. If I'm working the other way, it goes from 0, goes up by 0.7 volts and then it goes up again by 1.1 volts. Now we could write that if we wanted. We could say that V in equals the voltage across the resistor and then the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the base, the base emitter junction. So the voltage across the resistor is 1.1 plus the voltage across the base emitter junction is 0.7 and then so hopefully you can do that one in your head that would be 1.8 volts. If for any reason you lack confidence doing that, maybe the number won't be so easy in the, in the exam question, you can use your calculator fine, but you should write the numbers here to show your calculations. Okay, so that hopefully is going through it slow enough that you can understand. If you, if you don't understand, uh, play the video again. And if you still don't understand, uh, by all means, come and speak to me. Um, the only thing which I think that perhaps you might struggle on or might become an obstacle to understanding this is not understanding about these things like times 10 raised to the power of minus 3. So if you don't understand that, it'd be a good idea to speak to your maths teacher. But uh, equally, you could come and speak to me and I could give you a little bit more help with those as well. Okay, I hope that's been useful.